Hey folks, I was sent another 3D scanner. This one is from a new company called 3D Maker Pro, and this is their whale scanner. Now they suggested to me that sort of an ideal size for something to scan on this is a kind of head and shoulders bust. And I was thinking about all of the projects that I have started and haven't finished that might be a good candidate to use this on. Um, I'm somebody who starts a lot of different projects and as I get uh, excited about an idea and then I get pulled away to work on something else or I'll get another idea of something that I want to try out and so I have shelves full of things that I've started and still need to finish. And one of those things is this bust of Vincent Price that I started sculpting about seven or eight years ago. And I sculpted it in an oil-based clay. And the beauty of oil clay is that unlike water-based clays, um, that the water evaporates out, the oil-based clays don't evaporate. But what I learned on this is that if you leave it in the sunlight through a lot of heat waves, eventually that uh, oil-based clay will become hard. And it got to a point where I could no longer work on it. And I put a lot of time into it, and I was really happy with the direction that the portrait was going. So I really didn't want to give up on it, and I've kept it around for many years, kind of hoping that I would come up with a solution to be able to finish this. One way that you could do that is you could do a silicone mold on this and then melt down new oil-based clay, brush it or pour it into that mold, and then take that and be able to start sculpting again on that. Which is a fine idea, but silicone is expensive, and uh, then you'd end up with all this extra kind of waste. And so I, I haven't really been keen to start on that. Um, but the other possibility is to 3D scan it, and then finish it off in the computer. So that's what I've decided to do with this Whale 3D scanner. And um, we're gonna put it through its paces, scan this bust, and then finish it off in ZBrush. And I even wanna uh, 3D print it as a kind of a smaller scale thing just to kind of see if I'm moving the sculpture in a direction that I like. So let's uh, dive into it and give this thing a try. The software is really good at aligning the single scan after you complete it. So as I'm going around, I would find that it would get misaligned and you'd start to see, you know, two or three noses. But once you stop the scan, it automatically will stop and start processing that and trying to resolve it into a uh, complete picture. And most of the time, it would take something with two or three noses and merge it into one complete good-looking scan and so it seems like their uh, tracking whatever system is pretty good it seems to go very fast so you can really kind of move and um, and build that scan pretty quickly it doesn't seem to have a lot of lag as you're scanning now it did take me um, a good bit of practice to get to that point where I felt like I had some confidence to complete a good scan. The first several times that I would try, I was really struggling to get it to come out right. I don't know, it's hard to, it's hard to explain what the trick is, but um, you just kind of practice and you get a feel for it, and you get a feel for how fast to move and how far to move. Um, and then uh, things start to work out. This is a scanner that is not meant for seeing all the fine little tool marks that I had in the sculpture, which is okay for what we're doing here. But it's important to understand that each 3D scanner has a different purpose, and this one is not there to get you, you know, fine, poor detail. This is about getting you an accurate scan of objects that are about this size or quite a bit bigger. 
Here's a look at the actual 3D scan. I pulled it up in ZBrush so it's a little easier to see. So this is what we actually captured. And this is the sculpture. So this is what I'm talking about where, you know, there's this fine level of detail that we're not getting, but all of the actual shapes and forms we do have. And that's gonna be plenty for what I need on this project. So I went ahead and started refining this a little bit. I didn't do a lot to the sculpture itself, but I added hair and eyes and eyebrows, of course the mustache and his suit. The particular Vincent Price that I wanted to capture here is the one from The House on Haunted Hill, which also features this really cool historical Frank Lloyd Wright house called the Ennis House, which is made up of these tile blocks that you can kind of see in the background there. So I, a few years ago, visited that house and um, was able to actually create a photogrammetry scan of one of those tiles that you could uh, get close to on the street. And I used that to create the plinth for the sculpture here. And so that is now the piece that we're making. So I printed that on the Elegoo Saturn at about a quarter scale. And here is what I finally ended up with. So there's a couple of interesting features about this scanner. One is that it's basically two scanners in one. So they have in the software, they call it near mode and far mode. So there's a couple of the sensors that are designed for scanning smaller objects. And then these wider spaced out sensors are for scanning larger objects. So you can switch between those um, depending on, on what you're scanning, which is kind of cool. Um, I have not messed with the far mode much. I've pretty much stuck to the near mode because of the size of things that I have to scan. It does come with a turntable that is USB powered. Um, it has this little separate plate on top. And what's kind of cool about the plate is this pattern of uh, kind of like tree branches. Um, I believe the idea there is that each one of those is unique. And so when the um, software sees the first tree branch come back around, it stops the scan to um, complete it. It's really smart that it knows that it's complete, but um, the thing to remember about that is that then in order to change angles and get another revolution that way, you are automatically pausing and so you have to um, merge two scans together and the software is not quite uh, there yet I think as far as automatically merging scans together and I have not been able to figure out how the manual merging works um, there's not a lot of how-to documentation on the software at this point so I imagine they'll add that later, but since this is a beta unit, um, there's not much. So I think it's a really cool idea, but I think that um, you're going to kind of have to wait and see as the software develops um, how that's going to work in practice. The scanner has this cord, which has two plugs on. So one of these is the USB that goes to your computer, and the other one goes to just kind of a regular wall warp power supply that actually powers it. It does have, what I think is kind of nice, is some buttons right on the handle there. So that big one in the middle is your start and stop scanning button, and then these arrows adjust the uh, gain or the exposure on the scan which is really nice to have that right there because you can kind of adjust it live and see the results right there. One thing that I was very impressed by was the presentation of this scanner in this really nice, solid plastic case. Um, I am someone who takes 3D scanners back and forth to work to um, do personal projects and work projects. Um, and as you can see, 
I'm often using them in my messy shop. So having a safe storage place for it is a really welcome thing. Now I also have to say, when I first pulled this out of the case, I was reminded of the scene in Jurassic Park where the kid picks up the night vision goggles and the lawyer says, are they heavy? Then they're expensive, put them back. And that is how this feels. It is heavy and feels expensive. Um, but I think that that weight has an advantage, uh, which is that as you are moving this around the object that you're scanning, having some weight to it is kind of giving you an automatic help with stabilization. So all the little vibrations that you have um, as you move something around, by having some weight to it, it helps you move it around smoother, which is kind of a cool thing. So ultimately, what do I think of this? It's a fine scanner. Um, I think that there's an expectation when we're looking at products like this to think that it's going to solve all of our problems and do everything perfectly. And um, it's not a miracle scanner. It does certain things really well and other things not so great. And that's going to be the same thing for any 3D scanner out there, including the really, really expensive ones. There are a number of companies that have been coming out with scanners for under $1,000 in the last year or so, and um, they all have strengths and limitations, and this feels like a worthy addition to that lineup. Um, I think that if you know the things that you're scanning are this big and bigger, then this is a good option. I feel that the software still needs some work. It's a weird nitpicky kind of thing, but in the software, normally when you want to click on a button, um, you're clicking and there's sort of a space around the text of the button that still counts as the button that you're allowed to click on. This software seems to be set up, and I, I could be wrong, but it really seems to me that uh, if the letter is O, you can't click in the middle of the O, you have to click on the actual pixels of the letter in order for it to count as a click on that button. And um, that, coupled with the uh, minimal documentation that's available right now, makes it a bit challenging to get used to the software. I'm hoping that there are updates and that they will continue to improve that, but as of now, that's how it is. Also, it does say in the specs that um, the software works on Mac, and I was told that at this time that is not available, so I had to borrow a friend's uh, Windows laptop in order to test this out. So this certainly got me where I wanted it to in order to get me this far. It did a great job at what I needed it to do, which was to give me the forms of my sculpture into the computer so that I could finish it off to a satisfactory place. I will probably, uh, now that I have this, take a look at it and um, make some modifications. I'd like to make it into a bigger size. I'd like to do it um, sort of bronze finish with a stone base. I want to thank 3D Maker Pro for sending me their 3D scanner. I think it's really exciting that this kind of project is possible and accessible now, and I'm really glad to have been able to rescue my old sculpture.